Hello, my name is Susan Lawson, and I am going to be doing my child developmental presentation today. Um, so I'm going to be uploading a video uh, to the Blackboard website and uh, be submit my presentation through that. Um, so I just want to talk about the four stages of typical child development. So um, those would be an infant, a toddler, preschool, and early elementary. So I said typical, um, typical child development, but you're not always going to have a typical child come into your classroom. Um, so some of the issues that may affect child developmental, um, child development would be cultural, ethnic, social, environment issues. Okay, so I just want to start out by talking about cultural uh, things that may affect the child development. Um, that would be dietary restrictions. Um, so you always want to make sure uh, that the child is receiving, of course, the proper nutrients, the grains, the dairy, the fruits, the vegetables, the meats. Um, but in some of the cultures, they do restrictions on certain foods. Um, you know, a culture may just eat rice. Um, they may not eat any fish. Um, so they're lacking a lot of protein in their diets and this could you know stop the child's growth um, and this could cause sickness to come upon the child the child may not have a great immune system because they're not receiving the proper nutrients um, due to this cultural um, belief um, so uh, if you do have this happen a uh, kind of uh, intervention that you could turn to is um, maybe talk to uh, your boss to figure out um, some ideas. But I would recommend maybe um, telling the parent to talk to their doctor about referring the child to a nutritionist um, to try to get some extra information about how they can get the child back on track um, in their, their proper growth um, to reach the, the milestones that they're needing to reach. So if... Um, if the child isn't receiving the proper nutrition, it can also affect their brain development. Um, so, uh, we want to make sure that they are receiving all the the all the the food groups to really be able to think and learn properly and grow properly. Um, so, some of the ethnic issues that may affect the child de child's development is um, like I talked about a while ago, certain religions don't believe in eating certain things, doing certain things. Um, so it could also be religion, or I'm sorry, language. Um, so um, I noticed that certain religions, um, they really don't want the, the children to go to school. They'd rather them be homeschooled. Um, so this can kind of um, make a child be lacking in their social skills if they're not around, you know, um, other homeschool groups to pick up those social skills. Um, also, another language besides English. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, you would uh, want to maybe have an interpreter um, come in when you're talking to the parent and signing the child up for school to try to figure out the needs of that child. Um, and, and try to see where they're at developmentally, what, what you can assist them with, um, maybe developing a, a plan, a, a parental or a, an IEP uh, plan for the child. Um, so, um, or an IFSP, Individual Family Service Plan. Uh, so you want to make sure that um, um, if the child is needing additional assistance, that you're that you're putting it in a plan, um, you and and maybe your director and the parent, um, or your family advocate. Um, so the interpreter might need to be around for uh, meetings. That way they can um, uh, do uh, the translation um, into back into Spanish for the family, so they can understand. Um, also, it's important uh, to have pictures in your classroom uh, if your child isn't, um, you know, from um, America. Um, so they may need some pictures uh, to be able to um, correlate between the, you know, blocks, you know, to make sure um, of what those are. 
Um, so also some other things that can affect child development is uh, the social, social environmental issues. Um, so that could be exposure to toxins or substances, um, lead paints, you know, toxins, uh, substances, um, that could be before and after birth for an infant. Uh, the child may need to be referred to some therapy uh, to help improve their uh, cognition skills and their speech, um, their small and large gross motor skills. Um, I've seen speech therapists do amazing things with the child. Um, I know we talked about that a lot in class, how they're just kind of like magicians, and they really are. Um, they can uh, do worksheets with the child and activities um, with the child to really help them in their language skills um, and, and to help improve their cognition skills of, of thinking clearly and, and a little faster. Um, also, some things that might affect the child's development is um, just poor living conditions. Um, making sure that the child has clean water to, ba to bathe in, you know, um, in, and they're probably cooking in that water too. Um, it's good to make sure that they're having the proper water at their home and that the family has electricity and a proper living environment. Um, you know, at Head Start, I noticed I drove the bus and I noticed a lot of children didn't have those proper living environments. So it's important um, that we, as um, as we become early childhood professionals, that we see those child's needs, and uh, and that we we take extra measures to to try to get that child those needs. Uh, there can be additional help in your community. Uh, you may have um, a food bank in your community that you could, you know, um, recommend the the parents going to if they're needing food. Um, there, a lot of churches will help pay. Um, electric bills and such, you know, I know families get behind in that, especially around the holidays when it's cold outside. Um, so you can maybe recommend uh, the family to a few of these assistance programs in your community. Um, also, you want to make sure that the family is having proper transportation. Um, if the child's needing an eye appointment or a dentist appointment, um, there's a lot of free uh, transportation services around in our community. Um, I know we have Ethra in ours. Um, they charge um, either no or a little fee to, to provide transportation. You just have to call a number and schedule an appointment. Um, so you just want to make sure um, you and your family advocate at your center are working together to really look at the the whole realm of this family and the child mainly um, to make sure that they are getting what they need, okay? Um, so the stage one that I want to talk about is an infant. So during the first year, infants, they're developing their memory, their language skills, their thinking, and their reasoning. Um, so they also seek security um, they find attachment uh, near the adult that they're with the most, I've noticed. Um, whether it may be a caregiver or their mother, they've never left mama before, and mama's got to go to work. Um, oh, it's going to be a sad day because that child will be crying on that caregiver. Um, so some of the milestones for an infant is during the first month, they're bringing those little hands near their faces. Um, they're hearing well. They're starting to pick up the differentiation of, of voices, mama's voice, daddy's voice. Um, so they're recognizing their parents' voices. So the standard that I'm going to tie this in with is demonstrates listening and observing skills and responds to communication of others. So that's in standard two um, of the infants, the birth to three-year-olds. Um, so by the third month, uh, the the infant is normally um, they're normally able to raise their chest and their head while they're lying on their tummy, uh, maybe during some tummy time. Um, they're opening and shutting their hands. They're starting to work them back and forth. They'll clench those little fists if you've noticed. Oh, and they'll clench them so hard sometimes. Um, so they're also beginning to babble and they're enjoying playing with people. 
Um, so I want to tie this into the communication standard one. Uh, the child is demonstrating communication skills in order to express themselves. Um, so that that's a really fun thing is when they start expressing themselves they're laughing and they're giggling at the sound of mommy or daddy's voice um maybe shaking a rattle at them they're doing that little sweet giggle or they they'll sometimes make a little pudgy lip like this I, i've seen them do that and it's it's so cute um, so it, during the seventh month of the infant, um, they're beginning to roll over, they're sitting up, they're reaching for objects, maybe their bottle or those little, those favorite little puffs that they might eat that they love. Um, they're exploring objects with their hands in their mouth. So um, they're rolling over and on the go crawling. We better make sure we've got the floors clean because they will be putting things in their mouth. They're feeling that texture. They're putting their hands in their mouth. Uh, it's, um, yeah, it's kind of a, um, it, it's a, it's a hard stage that was for me with my little one. Um, so on their first birthday, they're learning to sit without assistance. Um, they might pull themselves up on the coffee table to stand up. Um, they, they're they usually clearly, pretty well clearly saying words by now. Mama, Dada, Bye-bye. Um, they're responding to verbal comments like no. Um, they're waving bye-bye and they're shaking their heads. You know, they'll say no or yes. Um, they might blow you a kiss. We would always teach them to blow kisses while I worked in the toddler room at Head Start, and they loved that. And then they kind of clenched their fist to act like they were catching the kiss. Um, so they're also learning how to use objects correctly, like their sippy cup. They're putting it up to their mouth. They're knowing what to do by now. Um, they're also using, they're wanting to learn how to use a fork and a spoon, if, you know, if you're introducing that to them. And it's a great thing to do that. Um, so they might be getting curious. It's helping with their hand-eye coordination by, you know, getting that. If it's applesauce they're eating, they're able to put that spoon in their mouth. So that's great that they're learning how to do that. Um, so I just want to say I found a lot of these sources at marchofdimes.org website um, just to kind of make sure that I'm citing my sources. So some of the developmentally appropriate activities for an infant would be um, they're responsive with their, their face, their facial uh, features, they're loving, um, they love to be held while they're, you know, um, sucking on their bottle, um, especially when they're napping, rocking them to sleep. Um, they need nurturing relationships, and that's the most important for an infant during developmentally appropriate practice. Um, if you're reading a story to them, that would be a great activity. Um, having some tummy time to strengthen their muscles. Um, the sitting up while an infant leans on you or, or has a support seat to build that muscle strength. That would be another great activity for the infant. Um, they also love to sing songs. Uh, the wheels on the bus, you'll see them. They'll, they'll row them little hands. The wheels on the bus go round and round. And uh, they love that. Um, so they're also crawling toward an object um, at this point. If you might have a, a fire truck on the floor, and if you push that fire truck, that child, it'll crawl to that fire truck if it wants it bad enough. Um, so, so that's great. They're really kind of starting to get a little more um, mobile during my next stage. Uh, so I want to talk about the toddler stage, stage two. Um, so toddlers, they learn through exploration. So um, they have an idea and then they try to decide how to try that idea out. Um, so they might think, okay, let's stack these blocks up and they're doing it. They're concentrating hard, okay? And then you'll have another toddler have an idea to kick it over or something. So that's not always fun, but um it's okay. It's providing some social skills at least. Uh, so when they have an idea, it's important to provide them support by talking to them about it. Um, even though they're just a toddler, they, they need a lot of communication to help start building those words um, and, and to help build upon their exploration. 
Um, so some developmentally appropriate activities for a toddler um, is dancing. They love to use that um that those large gross motor skills by dance and moving those legs moving those hands um they also love to to do the copying games um playing peekaboo uh they love that having the bubbles um i know we would always dance with them and turn the bubble machine on uh in the toddler room at head start and those kids they would see those bubbles land on their noses they would try to go chasing them down so they loved those bubbles uh, also another activity would be um playing with some musical instruments um having the little egg shakers or the maracas um so we just want to make sure that we're taking into consideration um, I always heard at Head Start that if, if you can, um, if they can, if it's small enough as their fist, then they, you know, they can't swallow it. So make sure whatever we put in the, t the little children's classroom that it's, um, at least the size of their fist, okay? Um, so those little egg shakers, we'd have to be careful with those. Maybe some maracas would be better. Um, so that would be a great, um, great way to introduce the children to musical instruments, uh, kind of cause and effect. If you shake it, it's going to make that noise. Um, maybe try some drums or some tambourines if you want to break out the pots and pans if you're brave enough and give the little children spatulas. They love that. They love that. Um, so also they're going to be stacking toys. Um, you can get those cardboard bricks and they can just try to make a wall with them. Uh, they, they love to begin to, um, start building things at this age and creating things. Um, so, um, I want to also talk about, um, if, if you're taking a child outside when they're a toddler, um, they're, they're sitting on that grass, they're feeling of that grass. They might feel that it's wet with a little bit of dew of a morning. Um, the grass might be a little bit pointy to them, might be cold, it might be soft. Um, uh, they might begin to see butterflies outside, so they are really exploring all that's going on around them. And, and it's, a, it's a beautiful thing to see a toddler uh, when they're just, they're trying to figure things out, you can look in their eyes and see just those little wheels turn and they're, they're little explorers. They're, it's such a beautiful thing to watch. Um, so from my standard that I would tie in with this exploration, uh, would be, um, the cognitive birth to age three, standard one, demonstrates curiosity to the environment. So when they're going outside, they're they're sitting on that grass, they're feeling of it, they're chasing butterflies, they're seeing the bees, um, they're definitely having some curiosity for their environment. Um, so also another developmentally appropriate activity for a toddler would be reading a story. Um, so they are having um, a standard to tie into this would be communication, birth to age three. Um, standard three demonstrates interest and engages in early literacy activities. Um, so, you know, I mentioned reading an infant a story. It's it's still important that we're reading them a story, even at, even at an infant and a toddler stage. We need to be introducing them to those early literacy activities of, of reading stories. Um, so it's important that they see that that print that print rich environment. Um, so the next stage will be stage three, the preschool age, one of my favorite age. This was the age that actually, um, made me fall in love with early childhood. Um, I, I, um, was working at Head Start and, uh, I just, I loved, loved working with those kids. Um, it, it really taught me a lot about children and, and I just enjoyed it. I love seeing them learn. I love seeing them grow. Um, I love seeing them conquer things that they couldn't do before, but they could do now. Um, so in this stage, uh, the child is using their thinking and learning skills, um, and they might use these skills in a more structured environment like um, Head Start or a daycare. Um, I know we have the Alpha School in our area, so that's a little different from Head Start, but it's, it's a preschool. Um, so 
they also need exposure to varieties of learning. Um, they're learning through play and exploration also. Uh, so the child, they're having the varieties in learning their, um, their small and gross motor skills, their cognitive skills, their social and emotional. Um, so they're picking up all these different skills if they are going to preschool. Um, I can't express how important it is to send a child to preschool. Um, they're around other children, so they are learning that, that environment of being social. They're learning about feelings, you know, what hurts their feelings, what makes them excited, what makes them scared or surprised. Um, so they're learning to share. Oh, that's a big one. They're learning to share. Um, so they're learning kind of a structured, more schedule while they're at a preschool. Um, so some of the some of the developmentally appropriate activities would be painting. Um, so they're holding that paintbrush. They're using their little fingers. So that's a great small gross motor activity. Um, they're also using magnifying glasses. Uh, it might be in the science area or you might. I love um, to take the children on a nature walk. Um, and they'd use their little binoculars that we would make out of toilet paper rolls and with yarn. So they'd put those binoculars on and we'd have our magnifying glasses like little explorers. And, um, and we would, they would go and put them up to the flowers. You know, they might see a bee and, and then we could start a whole study about bees and, and how they, um, they, they pollinate things. So, I mean, um, it's important that these kids are introduced to these, uh, the environment of science and, and how that, um, cause and effect happens. Um, so, um, a way that I can tie in a standard to use in magnifying glasses and binoculars would be science for the threes and fours. Standard one, demonstrate scientific ways of thinking and working. Um, they're using a variety of tools to explore their environment. Um, so, they're using those binoculars and those magnifying glasses to have a little bit more of an understanding of how the world is working around them. So, I, I think that's really, really important for a child. Um, so, next I want to talk about another um, activity. And that would be writing letters and their numbers. Um, so that a standard that would tie into that would be the language arts for threes and fours. Um, they're demonstrating general skills and strategies. Um, so the standard of the reading process, standard three, um, demonstrates knowledge of the alphabet. Okay, so this is the age where the children are, are really beginning to to learn their ABCs, they're singing their ABCs, they're writing them at the writing table in your classroom. Um, I know at, at work we we have a little writing table and the children love to go over there and just um, practice their letters. They're, they're ready to go on to kindergarten, so be a big kindergartner. Um, so also, we want to make sure that whenever we are preparing our classroom that we are um, creating a print-rich environment in our classroom that's preparing them for for next year of, of being the, the big kindergartner. Um, so we want to make sure that we're putting the words with the pictures as labels in our classroom. Um, if you have um, a child that has dual languages, you want to make sure you're putting the English and whatever language that may be their first or their second language. Um, you want to make sure you're right. There, you're putting those both on the label, um, and then two, you're putting that picture there, so that child is able to see the picture. They're able to see the word, and then they're able to see the item where the picture is. Um, so I mean, it's it's you know that's a that's a way to really help the child understand what these items are, what they're called, what they look like if they may not um, know English very well. So, in stage four, we want to talk about the early elementary stage. Um, so, by this time, uh, these children, they're, they're going into kindergarten. Um, they are diving into the greater depths of literacy. 
uh, the children, they're gaining understanding through reading. Um, they're gaining understanding through writing, listening, they're talking. Oh, they love to talk at this age. They love to communicate and ask questions. Um, they're, they're just building more of an understanding of their world. Um, so uh, some of the developmentally appropriate activities for the early elementary early elementary would be uh they're they're writing their names um uh, they are practicing how to make each of those letters uh whether it may be their first or and last name or just their first name um they are they're really trying to have that uh, that proper foundation uh to get ready for the rest of their um elementary educational experience um, so they're also learning about rhyming words. Uh, I've noticed kids, they love to rhyme. Once they learn what it is that those letters sound the same, um, they, they love to just keep doing it, throwing out those rhyming words. Um, so um, a standard that I could tie into this would be um, reading foundational skills and phonological awareness. Um, that would be an RFK 2A. Uh, recognize and orally produces rhyming words. Uh, so most of your kindergartners during the year, they are learning and they're able to produce those rhyming words. If you say cat, they they can quickly, I'm sure, name you hat uh, to produce those rhyming words. Um, so they're also talking about classroom coins, um, the penny, the nickel, the dime, the quarter. Um, the children are able to recognize and, and a lot of times tell the amount of how much that coin is worth. Uh, they might be going through mommy and daddy's change and say, oh, mommy, I want a quarter for a gumball at the grocery store. And they're able to look in your wallet and pick out that quarter. So that's amazing that they're able to do that at this young of age. Children are so capable of um, of what we're teaching them. They're just, they're, they're little sponges. They just soak up everything we're teaching them. Um, so I want to tie this standard to the measurement and data standard for mathematical practice, um, Kentucky KMD4. Um, you're recognizing and identify coins by name, the penny, nickel, dime, and quarter. Um, so also, the child um, is becoming more independent by this age. Um, they're wanting to dress themselves. They're wanting to go to the bathroom by themselves. Um, and I've noticed a lot of times parents, um, they kind of hate to see them grow up. You know, we work so hard to prepare the child to do things on their own. And then suddenly, one day, they're able to do it. And then mommy and daddy, or sometimes the teacher, um, is like, oh no, they can do it now. They don't need me to do that for them anymore. But you know what? Even though it makes us a little sad, it's a good thing because that means that that child is growing. That means that they're learning. And that means that you have done your job as an early childhood um, worker for the child. So, uh, I, I just think that that's a great thing. When the child is, is becoming independent and they're ready to do things for themselves. Um, so, uh, this concludes my presentation. Um, and I really hope you've enjoyed it. Um, I'm enjoying your class. I'm learning so much. Um, so, I just hope to continue on the learning process of early childhood. And I hope you have a great day.